Hi everyone, welcome to this video on skulls in radiology. In this video, we are going to discuss different characteristic skull X-ray appearances that we come across in radiology. Okay, so let's start. So in this first X-ray, we see these multiple well-defined punched out lytic lesions seen scattered throughout the skull. So the name of this skull is the raindrop skull and the diagnosis here is multiple myeloma. So multiple punched out lytic lesions throughout the skull multiple myeloma. In the next image, we see these well-defined lytic lesions seen in the skull of a young patient and these lesions look like that somebody has drawn a map on the skull. So this skull is known as the geographical skull and it is characteristic for Langerhans cell histiocytosis. Okay, And if you zoom on to one of these lesions, we see such an appearance. We see two edges of this lesion. So, why do we see these SJs? Because of the beveled edge. Beveled edge means there is unequal involvement of the outer and the inner table of the skull. And this is known as a beveled edge appearance and is again characteristic of Langerhans cell histiocytosis. Okay. Here we see this large well-defined lytic lesion in the skull. Okay. So, this large lesion in the skull which is very well defined is known as the osteoporosis circumscripta and is characteristic of Paget's disease and to be precise it is characteristic of the lytic phase of Paget's disease. So Paget's disease has three different phases that is the lytic phase, the mixed phase which has both the lytic and the blastic activity and then the sclerotic phase. Okay, So osteoporosis circumscripta lytic phase of Paget's disease. In the next skull, we see multiple white sclerotic lesions as well as these lucent areas interspersed within these sclerotic lesions. Okay? So this skull has both the sclerotic and the lytic lesions and this skull is known as the cotton wool skull and is characteristic of the mixed phase of Paget's disease. Mixed phase that is both the lytic and the sclerotic lesions. Right, And the next skull is known as a tam o shanter skull. tam o shanter means the appearance of a falling hat, falling hat sign. So this is because of the thickening of the skull because of the sclerosis and this is characteristic of the sclerotic phase, sclerotic phase of Paget's disease, tam o shanter skull. Okay, moving on, we see here multiple radiolucencies tiny radiolucencies, multiple tiny radiolucencies in the skull and this skull is known as a salt and pepper skull. So here the pepper, pepper is these tiny radiolucencies and the salt is the rest of the white normal skull. So this salt and pepper skull is characteristic of hyperparathyroidism, right? This skull is known as the hair on end skull, hair on end skull means there is diploic space widening. Diploic space widening is because of the extramedullary hematopoiesis and this can actually be seen in any hemolytic anemia but it is most characteristically associated with thalassemia, hair on end skull in thalassemia. Okay. Here we see these well defined radiolucent defects in the skull, in the skull of a young child and this is known as the lacunar or the leucan shadow skull. And this is characteristic of Chiari malformation. Here the bone is actually dysplastic. And this dysplastic bone of the skull is seen as multiple large radiolucencies in the skull and is associated with Chiari malformation. Again, in this skull of a young patient, we see these multiple gyral impressions. So these lucencies that you see is actually the gyral impressions of the cerebral hemispheres. And this is known as a copper beaten skull and is characteristic of raised intracranial pressure in a child. Okay. Gyral impressions leading to copper beaten skull. Okay. Then we have these serpiginous calcifications in the skull. And these linear calcifications, this is known as a tram track calcifications or the tram track skull and is characteristic of Sturge Weber disease. Right? These linear or serpiginous calcifications are actually gyral calcifications that are along the gyri of the cerebral hemispheres. Okay? So this is the table that you need to remember. You can take a screenshot of it and you can always keep it with you. 
okay so raindrop skull seen in multiple myeloma multiple punched out lesions geographical skulls looks like somebody has drawn a map and the skull is of a young patient and is characteristic of langerhans cell histiocytosis osteoporosis circumscripta seen in paget's disease specially lytic phase cotton wool skull mixed phase of paget's disease and tamo center skull sclerotic phase of paget's disease the salt and pepper skull where multiple tiny lateral senses are seen that is hyperparathyroidism hair on end skull due to diploic space widening seen in thalassemia lacunar skull or the leuken shadel skull in carry malformation copper beaten skull due to gyral impressions seen in raised intracranial pressure and the tram track skull or the tram track calcification seen in sturge weber syndrome there is yet another skull in radiology that we actually see in the pelvis so this is known as the fetal skull appearance and this is actually the calcification of urinary bladder and the diagnosis here is urinary bladder schistosomiasis okay so i hope you like this video there are a few other things that i want you to do please subscribe to our youtube channel for more such videos and you can always send us your suggestions or any other topics that you want us to cover in the comment section i hope that all the skull appearances are now clear to you and you will definitely nail it in the exam thank you